In this segment is Natalie Grantham Friend. She is a candidate for the Jefferson County Commission out of the Middleway District. Natalie, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You are a farmer as well. I am. I know. I was excited to hear the segment before me. So I am a farmer, a mother, a small business owner. I'm an electrician. Nice. I know, right? And I am the president of the Shepherdstown Farmer's Market, as well as a vendor in the Charlestown Farmer's Market and a 4-H leader. I'm a well-rounded community member. How many times have you been shocked? As an electrician. No, you avoid that. You're supposed to. We avoid that. I've been shocked more as a farmer. Electric fence can be tricky. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Now, my grandfather told me that you never have to flip a breaker as long as you keep your left hand in your pocket while you're working. Okay, um, that left hand in your pocket is a real thing uh because you don't want to complete the circuit across your heart. So oh. that's why you keep your left hand in your pocket. Well, let me tell you, as a retired safety engineer, mm-hmm. that's really bad advice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> flip okay. the breaker. Yes. Always flip the breaker. Yes, of course. Always flip the breaker. How, how long were you an electrician? I So I reinvented myself when I was 40 years old and went to James Rumsey. I'm a graduate of James Rumsey Technical Institute right mm-hmm. here in Hedgesville. Very proud of that. And I got my journeyman's license. So I use that in my day job because as farmers, I'm sure you know, we're not making millions of dollars, but as farmers, I work at um, Mountain View Solar Mm -hmm. in Berkeley Springs and I sell residential and commercial solar. So that's what I do during the day, Mm -hmm. which is why I have the flexibility to come and spend this time with you. But yeah. Now, I was going to stay on the farming thing, but you mentioned the word solar. I know. I'm ready for you. I'm ready. <laughs> which rhymes with polar, which is a polarizing issue it in is. Jefferson County. It is. Talk to me about this issue in Jefferson County. What do you see as the main problems with solar in Jefferson? It is a real issue. So, I am a farmer first. I, as I said before I came on, I am a farmer that sells directly to my community. My farm does the shepherdstown and charlestown farmers markets during the pandemic we realized how fragile our food system is and i'm telling you it is so i that is my first priority we as humans cannot eat electrons it pains me to see our very very valuable cropland turn into solar when there are other options So that is where I am on that. As soon as we remove the topsoil, it's over. That ground is not growing another crop ever again. So I'm always a farmer first and always feeding my community. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how many acres do you farm? My farm is 100 acres. We have 20 in a garden. And then I have 40 in pasture that we raise grass-fed beef. And I also do pork as well as we have about 200 chickens laying hens, and then I raise um, groups of meat chickens at a time. And how long have you been doing this? My whole life. So I'm an eighth generation farmer in Jefferson County. My family started farming in 1763, and it is in my blood. So I don't do this alone. That's very important. It's a family farm, but I'm very proud of our working family farm. And you're, you're in Middleway off of 51? Yes. On the right, if you're headed to Charleston, your farm's on the right. Yes. What's the name of your farm? Tudor Hall Farm. Tudor Hall Farm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so, we do the Charlestown and Shepherdstown markets. So if you've been to those markets, you've seen me. You know who I am. And why are you running for office? I'm running for office because I care about our community. Our county government has gotten off of track, and it is painfully obvious by the introduction of our comprehensive plan. It is terrible. It stinks. What don't you like about it? I don't like that it favors development and developers over regular property owners. How so? So I'm glad you asked because I have it written down here because I wanted to get it right. I'm a trained interviewer. I sensed (laughs) there was a question you I like it. I like it. So goal one is to ensure future land use regulations and policy support developing development rights of residential and non-residential properties. So the trick here is that it's this by right. So if you are, yes, so the use is by right, 
They are permitted by right, are allowed on all lots in certain zoning districts, and property owner follows the adopted subdivision and zoning ordinances and land use processes. And that sounds like it's something, but the problem is you can just submit a site plan and there's no real rules and regulations. So once it goes through, there's no stopping it. There's no slowing down the development in Jefferson County. Even though Jefferson County has zoning? This will take away zoning. This changes zoning. I see. And in my opinion, zoning is what keeps Jefferson County beautiful. The seat you are running for is currently held by who? It is currently held by Jane Tab. She is not running for re-election. She is not running. And she's not a member of either of the major parties. She's an independent, basically. She is. She is. When she was elected, I believe she was still a Republican. She was, yes, mm -hmm. as I understand it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Matt Miller. You mentioned this is the first time that you are running for an office, and, and you mentioned that comprehensive plan. Is that the main issue that got you off the couch, so to speak, to say, I'm running for this office, or were there other things as well? The comprehensive plan was definitely something I found along the way. The general lack of transparency of our county government and just utter dysfunction. I filed in January when they had just come back into session. Right? They were on hiatus for four months. Now, part of that hiatus was all that was going on over the solar issue and mm -hmm. so forth with a couple of commissioners deciding not to be there. Um, how did that affect you and, 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 and the farm and so forth and, and really get you fired up to say, I want to be a part of this? I have been approached in years past to run for office. I am a a person of the community who really does care. I genuinely care about my community. But I never wanted to run against Jane Tab, and this is my time. She isn't running for re-election, and I think this is my time, and I have a voice to lend to the nuances of Jefferson County. Jefferson County is special. It's not like any other place, and I feel I have an understanding of that better than most. Are you in, excuse me, in favor or opposed to bringing large employers into Jefferson County? If it's the right employer, yes. I want to bring good jobs into Jefferson County. The majority of our residents leave the county and the state to go to work. So I would like people to live at home. So what would a good employer be? Is Rockwell a good employer? I know, right? Rockwell. Rockwell is, Rockwell. This is I'm not not an indictment yet. Not, right. not to discuss whether that a Rockwell industry -like versus employee. service. Yes, right. 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 Thank you. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is complicated, and I am not pretending that I have every answer. Every answer to this, I know that when Rockwell first, we were promised Rockwell. We were promised a lot of high-paying, you know, jobs, and that isn't what was delivered. No. What was delivered? There's not as many jobs at all. How many jobs are there, do you know? I do not know. It's like 80 people working there mm -hmm. at least. Yeah. How many were you promised? I was not promised anything personally, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's also one of my problems with this whole solar farm, right? They want all these tax breaks and they're only offering us four jobs. That was the pilot agreement that, you know, did fail across the county commission. So that was important, but yes. I do think we definitely need some real growth. And also, a, a great way to start that is by supporting small businesses. Because we have a lot of small businesses in our area. We mm -hmm. just, they need more support. What does that mean, support? Making things streamlined, okay? So I have a, a farm stand, right? Um, I do the farmer's markets. I don't have a, my farm stand anymore. but. All of the permitting and red tape that goes from my product, from my farm to the table, is it's more than people think. It's a lot more than people think. And is that a Jefferson County th thing or is that a state thing? It's a state thing. It is better now that the West Virginia Department of Agriculture has taken that over, but it could be improved. It could be improved. I have seven or eight different permits to set up a tent 
on the weekends to sell food directly to customers. I don't think people realize that. It's very complicated. What are all the permits for? All of So I have a state business license. I have the municipality business licenses as well as a meat permit, an egg permit. I have a hazardous food plan because I sell the hazardous foods, right? I sell frozen beef and pork. But then also I have just a general vendor permit. And then as the president of the market, we have a permit for our market. We have to have our serve safe. Other vendors have HACCP plans. I'm not saying we shouldn't have safety measures in place, mm -hmm. but they could be streamlined. So do you have to pay an individual fee for each of those yes. permits? Yes, and they're all due at a different time. I would like the West Virginia D Department of Agriculture to ser seriously consider a fillable PDF. So do you have to keep track of when each of those permits expires, or do they contact you? No, I keep track of that. And then how long are the, do the permits, are they for months or a year or what? A year. One year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what you're saying is there should be a way of streamlining. Up. If I know I'm going to need for the next year these permits, mm -hmm. bang, 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 let's get them all, and they all in the same day? Yeah, that would be great. That would make sense. That would, would make seem, sense. Right? But also other small businesses, you know, getting through the health department. I've heard that is a struggle in Jefferson County. Just getting getting, getting their permits, getting their inspections, getting everything done in a timely fashion. Is is the, Obviously the health department is regulated by the state, but it goes through the county. Mm -hmm. The other permits you get, are those mostly local permits that you could fix as a county commissioner or are these state legislature issues you need to have remedied? I just think that the county, we could support the Definitely the health department is definitely falls under the county jurisdiction, mm -hmm. but yes. Yeah. Are, the, are the other permits all state jurisdiction? Or Most local? of them are. Now that the West Virginia Department of Agriculture has taken over farmers markets, mm -hmm. they used to be within the county, and that was a lot of frustration, but now they are not. Is it worse that the state took it no, over? No, it's better. It's better. It's better. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said you you sell some of your products direct to customers, mm -hmm. right? So. I was told in West Virginia, if you're a livestock farmer, you can't sell cuts of meat direct to the customer at a farmer's market. Is that true or false? That is true. You cannot butcher it on your own property. So I raise the animal. It is hauled out of state into Maryland, and it is processed in a USDA facility. Is that the key, that it has to be a USDA facility? It has to be either a USDA facility to travel because we get into the whole like interstate commerce situation, or you can have a West Virginia state facility. It just has to be a, a, an inspected facility. And do you use the one in Maryland because it's closer? I use it because it's closer and I've always used them. I'm kind of, I mean, we, my family's been doing this a long time and I have a relationship with that facility. Okay, mm -hmm. but if, if you go, go corn or whatever that you just pull out of the ground you can sell right to a customer or does that have to go through some process too i mean okay so this part i am not as familiar with but or you, any other crop you grow already uh, vegetables yes vegetables sweet corn if i pick sweet corn i can sell it directly to a customer as long as i have this permit in place with the west virginia department of agriculture my farmer's market vendor permit okay because they want to keep track of who is selling what to ensure the food safety. It's all about traceability. Does that make sense to you? It does make sense. I just wish it was easier. But more more functional. Yeah. 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 Oh, so uh, let's say you're, you're elected to the county commission. Yes. Okay, what can you do as a county commissioner to help streamline and fix these things? I'm not sure. Um, these are some these are some state issues that I'm that I'm really talking about, but I mean I can definitely speak on behalf of other farmers. Mm -hmm. Something else we considered is um, personal property tax in Jefferson County. Um, people don't realize, you know, you know, you pay your when your car, your RV, that kind of thing. We're paying that on our combines, on our tractors, and that may not be a lot of money to the county. But that's a lot of money on a farming operation when our margins are thin to begin with. Now, they passed a rebate for people's vehicles for mm -hmm. the personal property tax. Did mm -hmm. it apply to farm equipment too? I don't believe so. I don't know that for a fact, but I don't believe so. That would be interesting to get an answer on mm -hmm. because maybe you're paying money you could be getting back. 
I don't think I don't think yeah, so. I think it only applies to cars. My stuff is plenty though. old and fully <laughs> depreciated, but I mean, people don't realize that. People don't realize that. Okay. And in regards to making the county less dysfunctional as the county commissioners function amongst themselves. Uh, some people running for office fully supported Krauss and Jackson's mm -hmm. actions. Yes. Others did not. Where do you fit on that spectrum? I empathize with their frustration, but I do not support their actions. But they did highlight the incredible amount of just the lack of transparency within our county commission and our county government. And that is evident in this whole comprehensive plan. So in doing research for this position, I hope to fulfill, I've been going to all the meetings, right? and. Community members are lining up and passionately talking about the concerns of their community. And you see the panel on the stage and just their body language. Their arms are crossed. No one's taking any notes. It just seems like the decisions have already been made. And that is alarming. And that's why people are getting louder and louder. So I understand the people's frustration and I am willing to listen to the people. What are you hearing as the passions of the community that are being ignored? Mainly the solar, mainly the solar, but also water. We're very, very concerned about water, and so am I. Um, the last real study for water was done in 1991, and then it was that study was reviewed again in 2012, and recommend, recommendations had been made. But we have grown not in accordance to those plans. So groundwater is a real, real issue. And I don't think people really understand, you know, we're talking about the drought, right? People don't understand they're on a well, on this new well that he's just talking about, you can run out of water. And it is, it's not, it's not, it's a thing where you don't really realize it's a problem until it's too late. And we need as a county to get out ahead of this. But there isn't, isn't there city water in Jefferson County? Available? There is city water. There is city water, but the city, the city water, C-Tub has, um, is at capacity, right? There's a lot of questions with that. American, West Virginia American Water has come in and taken over some of our, more rural than what was used to be Jefferson County utilities. And our ratepayers are now the high, they're paying the most out of anybody in the United States. And minimal improvements, if any, have been done. Just their bill has gone up. So these are all real concerns. Not, and also our I'm sure you've heard our, you know, emergency services is also something that is a, a concern in Jefferson County. There are a lot of real concerns. So I want to just briefly get back to the solar thing. Sure. I, I have a hard time understanding the, I get that once the topsoil is gone, mm -hmm. you can't farm an area. So mm -hmm. let's, let's pick a, a hundred acre farm. Mm -hmm. If if I inherit it from my mm -hmm. parents and I'm 25 years old, mm -hmm. I don't want to farm. Mm -hmm. I want to sell the land and I, I want to make money off of it. So mm -hmm. I can sell it to a developer mm -hmm. who's going to build houses mm -hmm. and then they're going to be kids and the kids are going to take up resources in the schools and put it, going to put cars on the road. We're going to tax, really put it a, a burden on the services of Jefferson County, or I can sell it to a solar farm where I, I, I get my money, mm -hmm. and the taxpayers don't have to fund all of those. The, the, there is no impact, or certainly not the same kind of impact, on, on the community. Why isn't the solar farm better? That is an argument. One of my other problems with the solar farm is that the electricity it is generating is not being used in Jefferson County. We are not shoring up our grid. All of that is Dominion. So we have the Dominion transfer line going through Jefferson County. They're hooking to that. And then that electricity is going out of state to somewhere else. But that's a different thing. We're talking about the property rights of, of the person who who's selling his property or her property, mm -hmm. their property, to either to somebody. Some, mm -hmm. I don't want it anymore. I want the money. I don't mm -hmm. want the property. Mm -hmm. 
it, it seems to me that that's my my right to do that. I don't think anybody objects to that. Anybody, but why not do it to the thing that has the the least impact overall on everybody else in terms of the tax burdens, the schools, emergency services, the roads. I mean, that is what is happening. Right. That is what is happening. The community doesn't like it. So there's a balance there. Why does the community get a vote in what I do with my property? We live in a community. Okay. I think that's it. We live in a community. We should all be working together. You mentioned there were other options instead of leasing your property to a solar uh, provider. What are those options, Natalie? You, I mean, you're a little closer to your microphone, please. Oh, sorry, sure. um, just what you're saying. You can, um, you could sell it, or I mean, for years, I know many people who have retired from farming and rent it, rent it to other other land uses. So somebody else plants the corn and soybeans or whatever like that. Should that be mandated? Should should it be uh, something that the Jefferson County Commission considers as uh, certain areas of the county cannot be used for solar farms? Do they, and, and do they not already do that? I'm sorry, what? In regards to, back to John's question, okay. right? I've got options for my land. Mm -hmm. If one of those options is I can generate rental income from this solar company using my land to, with a bunch of panels on there, and you don't like that as an option. Is that something the Jefferson County Commission should consider taking away as an option? And do they already do that in certain parts of the county? They're not doing that in parts of the county. So the zoning that is in effect does not say in particular this area of the county cannot be used for solar farms. No, it does not say that. It does not say that. Okay. Mm -mm. Uh, by the way, Delegate Paula Espinosa sent me a text in regards to personal property taxes. Okay. All right. So. You may be eligible for some money back here. He might. Just, just so you know. So 50% refundable rebate on property tax paid on equipment for businesses of $1 million or less, including farms. So if you fall into that category, you might be able to get some money back on that equipment. Just okay. Just something to look into. Also, in regards to Rockwell, 150 full-time jobs, entry-level wage of at least $19 an hour plus benefits. Electricians slash mechanics start at $36 to $39 an hour commensurate with experience. So the, those are the wages and the number of jobs provided by Rockwell. The delegate Espinosa obviously works for Rockwell and has that information. Yes. Rockwell, I think I said Rockwell for a second. Final minute left, Natalie Grantham. Friend, tell people why they should vote for you for Jefferson County Commission out of the Middleway District. I care deeply about my community and I have a pledge to work and listen to my community Impact fees need to be raised. That's something we did not talk about. Um, I believe our comprehensive plan is fatally flawed. And finally, we cannot eat electrons. I want us to keep our green spaces green. Great to see you here. Appreciate it. We'll have you on again before the election. Right. And you have agreed to appear at our candidate forum, too. I have. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. It will be great to have you there. Thank you. Natalie Grantham, friend, Jefferson County Commission candidate out of the Middleway District in a segment 